everyone, so this is our companion series to our live stream technology show that we host every Thursday at 1 p.m. Eastern time. And we're gonna talk about each of these steps. We're, um, we're gonna talk about these in each of the episodes during the week for a 10 part series. Uh, and then afterward, I'm going to kind of step through and implement uh, in detail what we talked about in the episode uh, from the previous week. So in the, in the episode this week, we talked about what serverless is, what React is, and some of the sub-technologies off of that. Uh, during this 10 weeks, um, we're going to be walking through and actually setting up and, and developing a real-world application. But this is more about creating the perfect environment for a serverless React uh, setup with AWS. Um, and in, this, in the course of this 10 weeks, uh, we're going to build the app, which is going to have both a React component and a React Native component to it. So you'll be able to see how we organize um, kind of the project at the root level. So I'm gonna add in here also in the overview of the um, project structure. And so this is what we'll kind of have is we'll have the uh, serverless directory, um, an API directory, a React client directory, and then a React native client and that's going to be our directory structure so this is like to make it clear we could do something like root root directory in this case we're calling it the project's called should i and so then underneath that we'll have this folder structure <clears throat> for a reference sake the technologies we're going to use to build this up out uh, as we're AWS partners, it'll obviously lean a lot on AWS technologies. Uh, I list them out here um, and I'll post this in the show notes as well. Uh, for our API layer, we're going to use GraphQL and we're going to back it by Apollo. Uh, Git, obviously. Um, JavaScript, uh, 100%. Um, and we'll use NPM. Yarn as the package manager. Uh, Node for the... Um, uh, backend serverless layer and then react both react and react native for the client layer uh, there's a couple other technologies in here we have Sentry, and so Sentry kind of um, keeps tracks of bugs in production so it'll ca catch exceptions and and crashes and report back um, uh, the errors in a remote way and you can integrate that with git and things like that branch allows us to do this is and i'll put the the links are sentry.io and branch.io uh, branch helps with linking as we're going to be producing both an iOS and a Android app. Uh, branch helps you create links that if someone clicks it and they don't have the app installed, it detects what device they're using and routes them to the appropriate uh, device, whether it's the Play Store or the, uh, the App Store. Or if it's on a desktop, they can put in their phone number and get text to link to the actual device. So it helps with a lot of the commonalities there. Um, going back up here, I wanted to go through uh, the AWS technology. So Amplify, we're going to be using for mainly deploying. We're going to use a little bit. Um, we're going to use a little bit of the Amplify API on the front end to integrate with the APIs, mainly around authentication and authorization. Uh, AppSync is basically going to be AWS's wrapper around GraphQL and Apollo. Uh, Cognito specifically is going to be the layer that Amplify wraps for authorization and authentication. S3 for storing files, cloud formation for basically uh, having a, a uh, repeatable deployment format, uh, CloudFront for delivering assets, SNS for text messages and push notifications, SES for delivering emails, Route 53 for managing our DNS, DynamoDB as our data store, our primary data store, I should say, uh, Lambda for our uh, server layer or serverless layer. Code commit is our Git repo. Uh, AWS organizations will help us organize our various uh, environments. And Elasticsearch is the uh, another data, data source for more complex queries and whatnot. Finally, we have down here Docker, which is gonna be optional, but if you have a team if you have a team that works on various devices, like you have a, a team where some of the developers are on a PC, some are on a Mac, some are on a, a Linux box, uh, you can wrap all this up in Docker and just kind of uh, put it out there um, for everyone to use that way. 
Uh, the setup, as I talked about, we're using organizations. So we have a standard setup for all new clients and we have an AWS root account that's called Gunner Technology. And for every client that we get, we create a new client organization. Uh, so in this case, well, let's call it, let's call it Should I International, or let's call it Should I LLC, or should, we'll call it Should I Inc. Um, and so then for each project, for each project, um, you get a, uh, a a separate AWS account. So this would be like uh, the project level. So let's say we have, um, let's say for should I, we only have one project. So you'd have three AWS accounts under the client organization. But let's say uh, should I created a whole new app and it was totally separate from the other project, we'd create three more development and development staging and production environments. Um, now we have a script that automates this part of it and uh, we'll walk through that in one of the latest or later videos. Uh, just to kind of over, oversee what we're gonna be doing, uh, this is the overview that we're going through now. And uh, next week we're gonna go through setting up your environment. We'll look up setting up the AWS CLI and configuring your Git, uh, your Git credentials. Um, then we're gonna go through setting up the organization and we'll look through, this, look through the script that does this. Um, most of this, uh, we have a lot of the boilerplate already written. We'll look through pulling down that boilerplate, which I will make available for everyone. Um, and then we'll look at once we have the boilerplate configuring it, and then uh, for the back end, front end web, front end native, uh, we'll look at how to run it locally, what the workflow is for a development team, how to deploy it, how to add Docker to it, and then we'll discuss future improvements because there is some automation steps that we can uh, tighten this process up with. But that's the overview. And like I said, we'll go through this one uh, video at a week and for 10 weeks and make sure to check out our uh, technology show every Thursday at 1 p.m. as we discuss each of these steps and then get into the nitty gritty kind of offline.